conversion tracking is off, nothing else in the account matters. I don't care about the bidding strategy, the, the, the conversions, the CPA, nothing, nothing matters at all. So conversion tracking first and foremost is extremely important. So that's, that, that's how universal this, this kind of evaluation can be. It applies to everyone. More than two thirds of the conversions are coming from the brand. That's going to inhibit scale. Higher amount of ad spend. No, 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 no. No, no. <clears throat> That's the first thing right off the bat. That's a, probably the, one of the biggest limiting scale factors. Thinks current results are good, but hasn't been able to scale and wants to scale aggressively. Um, perfect. That's all. That's all we're gonna do. That's what we're. That's all I'm gonna know, and that's what we're gonna go off of in the beginning. So this is gonna be pure cold. Haven't seen this client before. Um, uh, Last 30 days, spent 22K, made dollar conversions, cool. So let's begin. First thing that I do is I always look at the conversion tracking. That's going to dictate everything that happens in an account. <clears throat> if conversion tracking is off, nothing else in the account matters. I don't care about the bidding strategy, the, the, the conversions, the CPA, nothing. Nothing matters at all. So conversion tracking first and foremost is extremely important. So what I'm going to do first is just take a look at the campaign structures. So uh, let's see what they're spending the most on. That's going to make the most amount of sense. So we got a shopping campaign on Target ROAS, YouTube search, YouTube shopping search, search, YouTube. Uh, oh, my. This is. <laughs> uh oh. All right. Well, this is a friendly partner of ours. So this is going to be fun. Um, so, so we got the video, video, a lot of video campaigns. Um, let's see what they spent in video. So 21K in video, they spent eight. Okay, so that's good. That's one third. Let's see what they spent in shopping. Um, in shopping, they spent 15, okay, with four campaigns. Got it. <clears throat> Let's see what they spent in search. Um, 7,500. All right, now that's the, the search. So search in, it's pretty evenly divided up between the three, but YouTube is still a big portion of it. <laughs> Looking at the bidding strategies, so this is all the information I'm going to gather before I check the conversion action. So that all this is leading up to what is currently being structured, which is going to dictate how I look at the conversion. So we're using restricted bidding strategies everywhere. And they said that they're wanting to scale. The other thing that I kind of noticed right off the bat is when you look at the conversions, the descending, there is 2,700 conversions. 2,000 of those are coming from what this looks to be is brand with search partners. So that's another issue right there. If <clears throat> More than two thirds of the conversions are coming from the brand. That's going to inhibit scale. The other thing that's going to inhibit scale is the bidding strategies running on a restricted bidding strategy. Most often is what it looks like. So let's look at the conversions. <clears throat> okay, so they're running a website conversion as primary. This is secondary. That's fine. It's good. Looks like it's working well because Google Ads is going to capture more on analytics. That's fine. Um, everything else is inactive, calls from ads, YouTube channel subscriptions, all of the other tags are inactive. And then the custom goals, there's three of them. And these are actual purchases. So it looks like they're importing it, but they're not actually appending it to any campaign. Purchase in game. So that's, that's fine here. <clears throat> so purchase, uh, this one's going to be capturing the conversions. Now, first thing off the bat, there's an incorrect structure. They're running heavy YouTube. One third of their spend is in YouTube. Their engaged view through conversion window is three days and they're using a restricted bidding strategy. What this means is that it's going to say, hey, unless I make a target ROAS or target CPA, don't spend any money, don't scale. Well, when you count your view through engaged convert or engaged view conversions of only three days instead of 30, you don't get all the conversion value and you're not going to be able to get all of the information back into Google and the restricted bidding strategy is going to be too restrictive. It means if I'm only feeding it three out of the 30 that I could, but I said, why can't I scale? Why isn't my, my campaigns gaining more impressions and conversions? Well, you're only counting them for three days. The click-through conversion window is 30 days. Not too worried about that. Like to move it out to 90, but this one right here when you're running heavy YouTube, especially when you're running heavy inbound brand, means that all of your YouTube videos are doing really, really good, but your data-driven can only attribute your conversions back to the brand. Why? Because if it comes after four days, it's physically impossible to reattribute it back to YouTube. So that makes sense for everybody so far. Again, going to go a little fast here, but it's going to be drinking from a fire hose and we get stuff. <clears throat> that's the first thing right off the bat. That's a, probably the, one of the biggest limiting scale factors on the restricted bidding strategy, incorrect conversion tracking, heavy on YouTube, 
too much into brand. That's a big structural issue that I noticed right off the bat there. So we want to move this from three to 30 days. This is going to allow the uh, YouTube, and I'm going to look at, I'm sure there's going to be some YouTube campaigns that have a, probably a fair amount of um, engaged views, but just globally, when I look at the account total, not just the campaigns, <clears throat> I can see that 6,000, um, uh, no, sorry, uh, I can see that 100 of the 2,700 have been coming from engaged views. There is engaged view conversions. This is only three days. Now, if I'm looking at three days and seeing 100, there's probably a lot more. Let's check time lag. Let's see how much we could be potentially missing. Knowing that this is heavy brand, though, my time lag is going to be fairly short because brand is usually one click, one day, one, one attributed conversion. I would imagine 80% of my conversions for the brand campaign, if I look at days to conversion, are going to be within 1%. 1%. So 101 out of 111,000 within one day. Yes, that's the case. That's reducing that time lag a lot. <clears throat> that means that my time lag in reality is actually longer. I'm just a self-fulfilling prophecy by only tracking the short and then positioning all my aspect and conversions into the short. So we already know that there's a seven day conversion lag and we're tracking YouTube for three days. That's a mistake. <clears throat> we can't track a three day conversion window on engaged view, which YouTube does well with a seven day time lag, basically by saying, hey, even before halfway through the sales cycle, we stop tracking. And also let's use restricted bidding strategy. We have more budget, nothing comes through. We've, we've blinded ourselves from seeing that. <clears throat> that's gonna be one of the things that's going to limit that scale. So the next thing that we're gonna look at is the different types of individual campaigns and what we're showing up for. What is this company called again? Okay, so just looking globally at all the search terms, and we look want to take a search term filter and say, what is small pet and apply? And this is going to give you the differentiation between all the shopping campaigns and search campaigns. I don't care if they're called non-branded. I don't care if they're called non-branded shopping campaigns. If we look at small pet select, we can find that anything that was small pet, small pet, small, blah, 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 here, we can see here that the conversions are 1800 of the 2700 are actual search terms coming from shopping search whatever it may be <clears throat> so now when we're looking at this we can say okay we have a sps non-brand likely misspells i don't know what the hell that is but that's probably not a good idea to separate that from brand campaign probably not not too smart because now we're looking at all non-brands doing okay but it's actually brand which is a huge mistake that people usually make <clears throat> so then i look at um Non-brand betting, small select, small pet select betting. That's going to limit scale. Why well, can't scale brand? You can't scale the last part of any funnel. You only can scale the first part or the middle part, but you can't just try to double down on people already searching for you. You can't make your own baby that wants to buy your own product. It's not going to happen in the bidding strategy. <clears throat> so those are things that we have to look for in immediately is the SH generic high. That's probably not BR. It's non-brand. That's brand. Non-brand, brand. Non-brand, non or that one's brand, uh, brand. This is non-brand, brand. Okay, so we already can tell you that the non-brand versus the brand doesn't make sense anymore. That's all gone. So this is where you have half of your non-brand being brand and your brand being brand and your YouTube not tracking conversions. Nothing is going to scale. So we're just in the first few minutes here of this evaluation. Any, and now I'm just going to pause here because, again, I'm going pretty quick. Any questions so far? I can't see the chat anymore, so just yay or nay with any questions. People are just wondering why are you speaking so fast today, like incredibly fast. Oh, this is just my normal speed. <laughs> um, but this is what's nice if you can rewatch this a few times, and you'll get the kind of just the cadence of it. Um, I think that this is good. That's why I said that we'll skip the quiz this week and just know like maybe this is just how to evaluate an account. But it's it's the common every single time. This is how it always runs. That's why this is just now normal, just day to day operations. So, how what are we known so far? Tracking is incorrect. The non brand showing up for brand. More than three quarters of our conversions are coming from branded search terms, and our top of funnel, middle of funnel that we should be able to scale won't be able to. <clears throat> So let's look at some individual campaigns now. Because this says search partners, you can segment by conversions and go on, oh, I'm sorry, segment not by conversions. I'm, I'm an idiot. Segment and go top versus other. <clears throat> search partners in here on the brand, I'm not too worried about because search partners usually is fairly okay on branded conversions. But we see here that we only spent 45 cents. Fine. Uh, search partners, $11, and we got, uh, oh, 
conversion value by cost that's working well, cost per conversion at 11, good. So we're looking at the different networks. A lot of times what you find is a campaign that has too much restricting bidding strategy will go too heavy into search partners, which is usually fairly junk traffic and they think they're on Google and they're actually not. <clears throat> so going campaign by campaign allows us to say, if you've opted into things like the search partners and that kind of stuff, you'll find some sometimes inefficiencies. I've actually saved a couple of clients by saying, don't spend 80% on search partners, turn that off and wow, quality of traffic increase. So that's something that we need to check that box. So let's see, search partners, not, and all we're looking for is just a higher amount of ad spend. No, 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 no. We go down to globally at the bottom, looks like search partners um, only spent $78, not an issue there. <clears throat> all right. Now let's do some other things here. So this search campaign that's generic high is also showing up for the brand term quite often. So terms like how the 690, we'll see the different differentiation between those. This is going to give us a, a couple of things here. What I'm looking at is the highest spending campaigns. What are they doing? Pareto's 80-20 rule holds tight for any campaign evaluation, which means that if I'm looking at 80% of the activity, that's, that's the whole account. The 20% is not going to make or break a difference in a campaign. The 20% can do double as good, and you're still only 40% efficient. So we're looking at the conversions here. We have 48 conversions on things that are, and there's 254. Good. There's probably some other things here. That's not going to be really great um, in terms of the um, scalability because the uh, cost per conversion is five, globally is 14, which means you take the opposite of 14, that's been reduced down to five, and this is more like $30. So if our average cost per non-branded conversion is $30, by safe does not contain, and there's gonna be some, some differentiation. I'm going a little bit too quickly here. Um, this was at 18, but there's also gonna be some brand in there, uh, which, is, which is fine. So now we're gonna look at non-branded CPA and, and CAC versus ROAS. I don't have LTV, we'd have to find that on a call. But now we're going to look at what is the cost per conversion versus the value per conversion and find out how much are we just paying these people over and over and over again. And if we're just throwing all of our profitability out right at the end of the end of the sequence because we're misattributing and YouTube is now bringing us new full traffic. So we want to look at something, the value per conversion. This here is going to allow us to see what is the AOV versus the CPA. Then the bigger issue that we're going to have is what is the actual LTV? So cost per conversion and value per conversion are going to be two things that we're looking at here. So cost per conversion, uh, there we go. So cost per conversion on the brand, $1.55. Good. That is good. That's not bad. We're way overspent, but that's not bad at all. <clears throat> the generic, we know that it's $14.50. Okay. Now, if we had a, that's not that great. If you're at 33% profit margin, that's break even. <laughs> if you had good LTV, that's fine. Again, I actually still don't know what this client does, by the way. That's what you'll notice is we already kind of found a huge efficiency. I can't even, I don't even know what this company sells. So that's, that, that's how universal this, this kind of evaluation can be. It applies to everyone. <laughs> But if you're looking at, let's say, 50% profit margins, that means that I make 25 on that. I spent 14 of that. I got a $10 profit. Why can't they scale? I don't know. Can they scale profitably? Yes. Are they going to scale this profitably right now? No. So then we look at the so non-brand RLSA. Okay. That's a little bit high, a little bit high. Um, non-brand betting, which we already know has some brand in there. That's also going to be sucking up the, the profitability. The non-brand similar audience value for conversion seems really odd to me. Um, that there would be $7 and $1. This means that we're probably tracking conversions that are actually not sales. That would probably have the default value of one. Let's just see here. Um, a calls from ads. That would be one of those. Yeah, calls. So calls are what's dropping that AOV. Okay, that's why. <clears throat> so we only had a call from ad that came from this one here. That cost us $25. Would you want to count calls? Probably not. I, I technically wouldn't. And especially if you're going to use a bidding strategy like target cost per acquisition, make sure that it costs me you know, $18 for a phone call to come in or $25. Probably a bad idea. So we're looking at the way that we're measuring success of a campaign. You have to kind of go one by one. Non-brand, not profitable. RLSA, non-brand, not profitable. Top of funnel, could potentially be profitable if this is actually top of funnel. 
And we already know that there's a little bit too much mix and match between each individual campaigns. So as a general rule of thumb, let's say if this is, let's say one third non-brand or <clears throat> one third brand, again, not profitable. So we're starting to see that they have too many campaigns that are stretching themselves too thin without a good, good structure. Right now, each one of these things that I can open up are just going to have inefficiencies. This one here is a YouTube remarketing other emails. Again, we'll have to take some time to find out what these are. Other emails, excluding recent purchasers. Okay, so these are people that probably are in their email list that they're just continually cycling it through. We can look at the audiences and find out is it actually working well. So we're gonna, we can kind of dive deeper into each individual one. <clears throat> email list here. $27,090 cost for conversion. Are we counting just the good sales? This one looks to be good. These are all purchases. Excellent. Now, this is YouTube. Again, we're missing 90% of the conversions that actually came from this, this campaign. So this is working very well at $9 cost per acquisition. Missing conversions, low hanging fruit, good opportunity. Would you scale this one? Depends on how often they're updating their lists. <clears throat> so let's just kind of go back and do more, more generalized uh, information here. When we're looking at the brand, this is where we're going to look at the audiences. The audiences are going to be less and less and less efficient, but these audiences are things that we're going to tell us the more most truth in the account. So the similar to all visitors. Good. All right. Now let's see. Uh, lifestyles and hobby pet lovers. Pet lovers has a good cost for conversion, which means Google knows these people and they're going to the brand and they're buying, which means this is an audience that we can expand upon because we know that when they find out about our brand and they buy, even if it's a return, it's cheap. Good. This is what we're going to gather out of the brand campaign. The brand campaign has a lot of truths in there that can be extracted and brought back to the beginning. So what I'm doing now is I'm kind of finding areas of low-hanging opportunity. So I can say consolidate, run these, start these, and you'll have good success if you track it and measure it this way. The brand will tell you who your customers are. It's still very, very valuable. That's why it's always a good idea to, as well to run the brand campaign. So pet lovers, affinity, nail it. Pet supplies, good. We have a few pet clients that I also can tell you that these are good for them as well. So that's just something that this is, this is a truth that's becoming verified. The dog lovers, which is my best um, person on YouTube, good. Uh, home and garden decor enthusiast, okay. Mother's Day dining, now you can kind of see where they fall off a little bit. Cat lovers, good. I don't know about home and garden as much. It could just be an overlap, um, but then the conversions drop down. But right now we can see that our pet lovers, our pet supplies, and our dog lovers are our three biggest uh, good audiences. Remember when we did the training where we're talking about top of funnel and ways to expand when I said use Google's affinities and in markets, their own database, this is still holding true. Google knows the most about, the, about these people because it's a very wide audience that Google continuously watches and fills with more cold traffic daily. It's not DSK, it's not placement, it's, it's evergreen. So we have, I normally would take a note, drop it off to the side and say, here's where the audience is start to target when we're looking at YouTube specifically. <clears throat> so we've got the brand campaign, the shopping campaign. I'm okay with the running AT ROAS, which I actually, I like this one's working really well and everything's fine there there's probably a little bit too much brand but that will that'll be easy cleanup so let's look at some of the youtube videos here this is where i think that there's a lot of low-hanging fruit there is a total and i hate these columns here let me just turn these off real quick because they always make this screen really fat there we go um there is a good amount of YouTube. So YouTube in feed, subscribers engagement, in stream, subscriber engagement, customer emails, YouTube remarketing, remarketing, marketing. They have not gone cold yet. It doesn't look like it. It looks like the subscribers and engagement could be people that are subscribed. So let's just check this out here. Uh, bulk rabbit, what the hell is that? Um, this is not a glitch. I'm interrupting the video you're watching because I need to remind you that I'm always looking for people to join our team. So if you're passionate about Google Ads and you want to work with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, please go to solate.com forward slash apply. Speaking of working with the best Google Ads agency on the planet, if you're having trouble with Google Ads and you want professional help, that's what we do. You can go to solate.com, that's S-O-L-8.com, to apply for your free, no obligation action plan. And if I've given you any level of value at all, maybe think about giving me a thumbs up and subscribing to our channel. That's how we juice the YouTube algorithm so they actually know that I know what I'm talking about. If you have questions, comments, concerns, or confessions, hit me below in the comments. And now, back to your regularly scheduled program. Where are these ad groups? Hmm. 
All right, so this is actually Is this just pure cold? No topics. Oh, the running placements. Okay, really low views though, until until yesterday when Google lost all converted track and says, uh oh, and they got to figure something out. <laughs> all right, so those are using placements, which is actually really interesting. They're not getting they're not getting anything from their placements. Uh, but their other, their expansion is actually on right now. It's still not delivering anything. Okay. Um, no exclusions where ads showed. Yep. So here's what's interesting is when you look at the cost and you look at the placements, their, their expansion is turned on, which means, hey, I'm going to target these very specific campaigns and there are these specific channels on YouTube. Awesome. Now, what happened? Well, we spent $16,4,4,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2,2